Creating the sitemap is an essential step in the design process of any website with more than a couple of pages. I'm going to show you how to do it step by step, even if you're a beginner starting with a blank page. Firstly, you need to know exactly what a sitemap is. Put simply, it's a written structure of a website's content. It organizes all of the pages of the website into categories and displays the relationship between them. Now there's actually three types of sitemap. An HTML page on a website like this one that a user can navigate to on a live site and see all the pages. Secondly, there are XML sitemap, a file specifically formatted for search engines, making it easier for them to crawl, index, and understand the site's content. I'm going to show you how to make one of those very quickly in the final chapter of this video. The third meaning of sitemap is the written plan, an organizational diagram used by design teams to plan the website structure. That's what we're going to focus on for the majority of this video, because just as you wouldn't start building a skyscraper without consulting a structural engineer, building a website without some idea of the overall structure will probably lead to the whole thing falling apart. Let's jump straight into a draft so I can show you the process. So even if you just have something like the company name and a vague idea of what they do, we can start to create a sitemap based on this. Obviously, we're going to have a home page, which is just at the, the root of the website after the .com takes you to or whatever. And then there's going to be some pages on that website. So usually companies have an about page. They probably have a contact page and then there'll be something about their products and services. And I'm just using Fig Jam for this, but you can use anything. A bit of paper is what I usually prefer, but I'm doing this so you can see it. And uh, maybe they'll have a blog because they need a little bit of information about uh, what they're doing and, and that kind of thing. So we might start with just something like this. So even if the company don't give you anything and you're having to show them and explain to them a little bit of structure, you could start with something like this. But I asked ChatGPT to write as a brief so it could be a little bit more realistic and we could have a little bit of a conversation so you know what to tease out of your clients. So first of all, they might have an existing website or if it's a new website, just asking them, what information do you think should go on the website? And kind of just starting with the, the big picture of that. So here we've just got a list of like 20 pages that might be featured on the website. So I'm just going to include them here. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is take a minute to try and sort these out into some categories and sort of make sense of them and see if we can group these together. So instead of a list of 20, we've got fewer groups. Okay, so I might start with something like this. We've got this down to fewer categories. So it's good to just organize these things, but really we want to drill in with our client or stakeholder. So you want to ask them a question. So in this brief, I've asked what is the primary goal of the website? From So this will be from the client's perspective. And they have talked about they want to establish the company as a leader in sustainable energy solutions by educating the public, showcase the product projects and achievements, engage with potential clients and partners. So this is the kind of answer you'll get from a company usually. It's usually something that's very general, a uh, little bit generic. And so we want to move on from that slightly. So I've then asked the follow-up question of, do they want users to do something in particular other than just read their website? Is there a call to action or any way of recording success? And this when you can drill in with your client and find out specifically things they want people to do to contact them, sign up for events, become a partner, subscribe to the blog, apply for careers. So we've got some key uh, things here that we can again copy. And I, I would just put these things before you so you can look at them at the same time, maybe call this the goal. Then what we want to do next is play with our, our rough site map, make sure that it is directing towards uh, not only just organizing these things, but making sure that the goals are going to be clear. And the sitemap is not the only thing that is going to help us put the goals front and center. That's also going to be to do with the layout of the website, how we present things. But it's important to bear in mind. As you do this, we want to get this down to maybe four to eight categories, something in that region. We don't want more than, say, nine different choices within a navigation or different sections of a website because that's too much choice. It's too overwhelming. We need to do the job of making sense. Imagine you saw that original list of just 20 pages in navigation. That would be ridiculous. So try and bring this down 
it's maybe in that region, four or five at the lower end, seven to nine at the top end, different categories uh, that we can choose from. So let's refine the sitemap now based on the goal, based on the call to actions that are desired, and also trying to achieve maybe between five and nine different categories at the top level on the website. More than that is too much choice. Somewhere around seven, maybe fewer can be better, is a good number so that users aren't overwhelmed with too much choice, but we're doing some work to create that and to categorize the pages on the website. Now we can refine our sitemap by having a look at competitors. So ask your client who their key competitors are, and then we can also just have a bit of a Google in this case and just type in some sort of long query that gives us something that might be uh, similar. And then just have a quick look at these uh, options that are coming up here and just see if any of them sound, you know, similar. And then we'll just have a bit of a flick through. So with this site here, straight away, we're seeing industries, company, news, careers in terms of their top level uh, navigation. Sometimes they might have an actual site map. It's often linked to in the footer. It doesn't appear that they do here, but they do have this sort of the site map is a footer kind of thing. So I'm just going to take a screen grab of that. Then with these guys who do solar maintenance, that seems quite narrow compared to us. So I'm going to skip over that. Then we have these guys, Intrepid. These do different options. We've got the typical product services and contact at the top here. But then we've got some other categories here as well. Let's see if their footer shows as much. Not really. So that's pretty simple. I might take a screen grab of this top part of the website. This is Siemens. So this is a, a huge multinational company, sustainability being one sort of uh, topic within that. So this might not be too helpful. But we could get some sort of familiarity with, with this. And even just seeing how they do their site in general here is sort of helpful for us. So maybe let's just grab of this and then we've got elite and these guys have a lot of these different categories of services that are mentioned on our website so this is quite useful so let's maybe grab a screenshot of their navigation here maybe of this whole section here of their different services ah yeah and we've got kind of a sitemap in the footer here so let's just get a shot of this as well then I'm gonna bring all of these into Figma. So now in FigJam with our list of pages, the goals and seeing a little bit what competitors do, we can start to bring this thing together. This might be pretty small on your screen. I'll zoom in a little bit. But here, there's a few things I've noticed. So there's this title for company that's used here and here, which I think is quite cool. And again there, so they've all used company or about us. So perhaps here, this needs to be either about us, which is a bit gentler, or company. So it's clear that we're talking about the business rather than about the sustainability or energy and that kind of thing. And this with learn, this is far too generic. So this could be something like renewables or sustainability. Um, maybe it all goes under the blog and these are kind of certain pages or titles, but this is something to, to chat with a client about so we can get the language exactly right. Services is one that is used. Um, that's a pretty a standard thing here. Um, so that's probably good. And maybe we could just, when we come to actually do our navigation, maybe we have some main titles kind of how they've got on Siemens here, just to th like they've got three primary, then they've got one, two, three, that sort of secondary, and they've got some other links up here. It's maybe a little bit messy, but the idea of primary and secondary could come into it. Why don't we just start here? You'll see that AI is going to be able to do this in seconds. Well, because I want you to use your brain and we're you know, valuable consultants as uh, web designers and strategists, to the businesses that we work with and all our experience and everything we bring. If you just start with AI, what's going to happen is you're going to be led by AI. 
And instead, we want to be writing prompts that are intelligent, that are thought through and asking it to help us to improve on what we've done to maybe fill in some gaps, reminders of things that we've forgotten about, uh, not to do all the thinking for us. So first of all, I just want to start with ChatGPT. If we're putting a really simple prompt, just asking it to write a sitemap and telling him what the company is, we will get level one of an answer. But then if we actually add some detail to that from the brief, we will get something more. This version is more refined and we could go further now by saying, hey, there's too many different sections here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's probably at the limit. So whether we want to reduce that, we could say more about the specific services that the company offer and get really close to something. There are some other AI tools as well that are specifically for generating sitemaps. There's one called Octopus and links to everything will be in the description. So I'm going to paste that second prompt that I added to GPT here and just hit generate. And again, it will create a sitemap for us. And here we have even, again, the sections within each page uh, that should be, or they're suggesting to be featured, not just the title of the page, like an about us page. It says here specifically, let's have a look at certain things here. If I zoom into this, let's have a look at on the about us page at history, the team, the values, the achievements, testimonials. So there's quite a lot of information here. And that again was generated in seconds, but we've got too many categories, but it's helpful to compare that. Next, you could use Reloom and its site builder. And uh, I'm going to pop the prompt into here as well. And there's definitely going to be more pages than this. I'm going to say 20 plus and let's generate. I've zoomed in massively so you can see what I'm doing. So let's just zoom out a little bit and it will start to map out our sitemap for us. Again, what Reelim does is also include the sections that should be on each page. So it suggested the way the home page would work. So this would lead us straight into a wireframe as well as which pages should go below. I mean, there's way too many options here, but it's probably given us some things that we haven't thought about before. And it also gives us the option to generate more uh, empty pages. And you can get started with Reloom and with Octopus for free. The final steps would be to put all this side by side, the draft site maps you've done, the notes from the client, the research you've done into competitors, the AI generated site maps. Look for any gaps, make sure you've got all the information there and then categorize it, organize it so it leads towards the goals. It's just an editing process. Then we want to get that in a nice, neat digital diagram. You can do this in Figma, just in FigJam here, or even something like Google Slides. And then it is ready to present to your stakeholders or clients. And with them, you can review it, explain why you've made the decisions you have, why the information is organized the way it is and how that will help support their goals, get their input on it. And then together, you'll have that plan that's agreed and you can go ahead and move to the next step in the website creation process. Now, I said I would tell you about XML sitemaps, and these remain a fundamental part of SEO best practices. What they do is they help your website be more accessible to search engines so they can crawl the site, find what's there, find their way around. And while they're not a silver bullet when it comes to SEO, they're just one part of a broader strategy their importance shouldn't be underestimated. So how do you create one? Well, if you go to sitemaps.org, it will tell you about the format. Now, don't get overwhelmed with this. I'm going to help you do it very easily. But it's, it's worth maybe being familiar as a web designer uh, with this information. And it just gives you the simple structure here where you have the location of each page and you can put things in like when it was last modified, how frequently it changes. Now, if you just want to create one of these automatically, you can go to xml-sitemaps.com, paste in your website URL. So let's just put the Flux website into there. And then it takes a couple of minutes to crawl the website and then it's going to index it and it's going to create a sitemap that you can just download and then upload to the root folder of your website. Hey presto, 
it's done. If you're using Webflow, there's actually an article on their website about creating a sitemap in Webflow. It actually auto generates it. You can just go within the site settings and the SEO tab to do that. You can also add a custom sitemap or you can um, customize what's there. And it also tells you about the next step with XML sitemaps after you've uploaded it to the uh, root file on your website and so does the XML sitemaps website. It reminds you to submit it to Google. So you can just go to a page there on Google, submit your website, and it gives it a chance for their robots to uh, crawl through the site and index it. A well thought out sitemap is crucial to the web design process. So hopefully this helped you get started. There are links to all the tools I've mentioned in the description where you can also find more of our free resources for web designers. Until next time, happy designing.